Welcome everyone to the apply to, uh, to the ATMCS conference series. So the real conference was canceled, um, but we are still hosting a bunch of early career talks. Uh, so the first speaker today is Jacob Legoni, and uh, the title of his talk is a framework for differential calculus on persistence diagrams. Thanks, Sarah, and also Henry for for this opportunity. Um, so yes, this is a this is a work that has been realized during uh, my first year of PhD with uh, with Ulrike Tillman and Steve Udo. And um, yes, with this uh, kind of Zoom talk, I realized that uh, mathematicians, of course, like abstraction, and this is kind of the quintessential situation where uh, even my audience is kind of a, a set of names, abstract variables, and um, but still, I kind of I kind of miss concrete people, you know, the their interactions. Uh, the highest contact, so please, uh, please interact, please uh, interrupt me at any time uh, if something isn't clear. And, um, and yes, so as a, as a first slide uh, in persistence theory, uh, this is almost mandatory, right? Recalling that we have a manifold of data, we can get barcodes using some kind of sub-level set persistent homology, and then we have a map out of barcodes to get back to a Hilbert space where everything is convenient. And this talk is about making sense of the differentiability of the first map, the maps going into barcodes, and the second map going out of barcodes. And maybe we need a little motivation here. Um, going back to the topology we put on persistent diagrams, the so-called bottleneck or interleaving metrics are useful because they allow to talk about the continuity of persistent homology. And that's very important. Noise in the source has to be noise in the target. And so here we kind of try to deepen a little bit our analytical understanding of persistent based map by talking about differentiability. Because may maybe we, we, we could like to have maybe Taylor expansion theorems or gradient flows or gradient dynamical systems de designed on, on, on barcodes. However, and this is the second part of the talk, if we're going to devise a notion of differentiability, it is very important that the maps that arise in practice, this map B and this map V, are differentiable. It's like in topology, if we, if we put the host of topology on barcodes, well, it's, it is not relevant with respect to any continuity of, uh, of persistence maps. So we are going to examine in the second part uh, whether maps we are contouring persistence theory are smooth uh, in some sense. And just notice that it's not quite straightforward how we would define a, a differential calculus on barcodes because the fact that points can come in and out of the diagonal makes it impossible to find a global dimension of barcodes. And the structure of a multiset, inherently unordered, makes it impossible to find a, li a local linear approximation. And just to reiterate what my goal is here, uh, I don't want a general differential calculus. And I only need a notion of differenti uh, differentiability of maps going in or out of barcodes and of differential. Uh, it's very basic differential calculus. I don't need the RAM calculus. I don't need parallel transports. It's really like. Uh, two basic notion that we need here. And so let me be a bit more precise. What do I mean by a map from a manifold to barcodes? This is maybe the most important setup. You first should spot that there is a, a simplicial complex K that is fixed, but you, you could replace it with a topological space or a manifold maybe. And this space filter K is a space of filter function over K. So real valued map defined on a simplicial complex. The DGM map that goes to barcodes is the usual uh, barcode associated to the ordinary uh, sub-level set persistent homology uh, module in one degree, an arbitrary degree, or all at once, if you wish. Maybe the unusual part is what comes before. You have a manifold of parameters, a finite dimensional manifold. And for each parameter, you're going to associate a filter function via this map F. It's kind of a, a smooth selection of a filter function. That's the way I, I, I should think, I think of it. And the composite, this map B, the barcode valued map, is, is a map we want, to, we want to understand whether it's differentiable, uh, differentiable or not. I think the, the, the important visual example to keep in mind is the following, where the parameter space is the sphere. And to each element of this sphere, to each parameter, here this, this vertical height direction, you're going to associate the, the height function on the simplicial complex. That's quite useful to keep in mind. What about maps out of barcode? Well, we, we have plenty of examples, right? We, 
we have the, all those vectorizations, those kernels, such as plasticity images, but we also have more statistical kind of maps, like metrics, the bottleneck distance to a fixed diagram, or we could think of fresh functionals or maybe vast sustain metrics. And finally, smooth loss function on intervals. This is kind of a very vague definition here, uh, but I'm just saying a uh, linear combination of a smooth function applied on an interval. For instance, the sum of lengths. Right. And so what's nice is that if you combine these two parts into barcodes and out of barcodes, you can get objective functions. So the composite on the top of this slide. You, you start from a manifold, you land into the real line, and you're going through barcode. And these in objective function, you want to minimize in optimization. And by, in fact, implementing the choice of manifold parameter, parameterization, vectorization, there are various uh, very interesting applications of this idea of merging persistent homology and optimization. So this is really a rough table, a rough classification of what I believe are very important applications. You can see that there are geometric inference application, a lot of in, in, in machine learning also, and in statistics. And in all these cases, you kind of need the differentiability of the composites so as to achieve minimization via gradient descent, this unavoidable paradigm of today's optimization. And so this is another motivation of this topic some, somehow to find a, a principal approach to, to ensure the differentiability of the composite that can be implemented in all these various situations. And let's go for it. But let's just say that if we're going to, to generalize, say, finite dimensional smooth calculus to, to barcodes, there are already wonderful theories uh, that do that. So here you have some examples. I'm not going to detail them, but you can spot the optimal transports and their vast system gradient flows. And we already know we have interesting relationship between uh, persistence barcodes and, uh, and yeah, this vast system measure space, thanks to Theo and Vincent and the presentation last week. You can also spot Alexandrov geometry, and it's, it has in fact already been uh, used to compute fresh means of persistence diagrams. But, uh, but yes, I don't, I don't want to make any choice here. Uh, those, those theories are great. And if I make a choice, I would have to justify wh why not the others. And so ideally, we want the choice to be made canonical. The differential calculus should be made canonically for us on barcodes. And to do precisely this, um, we are going to use yet another theory called diffeology theory. Where, and I'm going to explain the, basic, the basics of this theory. So in diffeology theory, you have a set S, you fix a set S, it's merely a set, and you want to equip it with a set of maps that you think as the smooth maps. This set of maps, that are called plots, form together what is called the diffeology. So you can see the picture. Uh, a plot is just a map into your set coming from an open uh, domain, uh, an open set in a Euclidean set, and of, of varying dimensions. So one plot could come from R, or one plot could come from R3, and so on. However, Together, you want that these plots satisfy a few, few great intuitive assumptions or axioms. The first one is the covering axiom. You want constant maps to be plots. Well, of course, uh, constant maps should be considered as smooth, right, with zero derivative. The locality axiom is saying that if you want to check that something is a plot in your diffeology, it's equivalent to check it locally around each point. So it's kind of a shifty axiom, uh, again, kind of intuitive. And finally, the coherence axiom is saying the following. If I give you a plot, and you pre-compose this plot with a map that is smooth in the usual Euclidean sense, then the composite should be again a plot. And let's have an example. Of course, any smooth finite dimensional manifold or any Euclidean space is a diffeological space where you take their usual smooth maps as plots. Now, if I have two diffeological spaces and a map of sets, it is a morphism. Well, if it sends plots of the one to plots of the other diffeological space after post composing. And so we, have, we now have a category, this huge category of diffeological spaces. And I'm saying huge because all our six theories there are kind of sitting as strict subcategory of our category of diffeological spaces. And this category is very well behaved uh, in some uh, aspects because it is closed under all usual uh, sets oper set operations. So what I mean by that is if, if you take disjoint union of two diffeological spaces, well, you canonically get an, a diffeological space, similarly for quotient, intersection, and so on. 
So unlike manifolds, right? Uh, um, whenever you do a quotient with probability one, you're, you, you, you are out of the category of manifolds. So that will, that, that will be quite useful. Okay. And now our goal is to find a diffeology on barcodes because then barcodes will be one object, one diffeological space in this huge category. And the arrows in and out this object will be the smooth maps. So that's what we're going to do now. And we start by observing that there are canonical kind of bundles on top of barcodes. So these spaces are to the power of two M plus N should be thought of as spaces of ordered barcodes. Their elements are just ordering of first M bars, finite bars, and the last N entries are parameterizing infinite intervals. And you just have a quotient map, the one forgetting the order and shuffling everything to barcodes. And using, you can vary M and N, you get several, several maps like this. And using that, we can present barcodes as the following collimate in sets. It's the disjoint union of these ordered spaces modulo the equivalence relation that uh, identifies different ordering and uh, trivializes length zero bars. Um, yeah. And because we're doing disjoint union of Euclidean diffeological spaces and quotient, we know we have an induced quotient diffeology. So we have a diffeology on barcodes, which was the goal uh, so far. And so now if I have a map from a manifold to barcodes, well, it is smooth if it's an arrow in the category by very definition. However, uh, it, you, you can be very upset with that because I told you I want something very convenient to check in practice. And I'm telling you, uh, a smooth, if you want to check something is smooth, check it is an arrow in one of the biggest categories we know. So we need somehow a kind of a, a concrete characterization. And here, here it is. So a map is smooth if and only if locally around each point, it is possible to find this dotted arrow, this dotted lift to a space of ordered barcode. In a more down to earth way, this is just saying that we are able to track the intervals appearing in the image locally in a smooth way. That's very equivalent to that. Finding kind of a coordinate system, tracking our points in the persistence diagrams in a smooth way. So this characterization is quite useful because for instance, you can now talk about local smooth map, namely smooth around the point rather than globally. You can also have a notion of differential by taking the derivative of the lift. Uh, and you can also speak about R differentiability rather than infinite differentiability uh, if the lift is only of class CR. Now, duly, if, I, if we have a map out of barcodes, so this might be, uh, it is smooth if by definition it's an arrow in the category. And again, there is a characterization. It's just that this uh, arrow, these dotted arrows, are smooth in the usual sense for all uh, possible uh, spaces of the barcode. And again, this is just saying, for any kind of smooth perturbation of the barcode, allowing points coming out of the diagonal or merging to the diagonal, the reaction of the image should be smooth as, as well. Again, it has a few interesting outcomes, but it's not crucial for this talk. So I'm, I'm not going to detail that, but it's the same as the, the previous case. Now, if we stare at this diagram, I give you a map B that is differentiable in this new exotic sense and similarly for a map B. If you compose them, it's just looking at the composition of the dotted arrows, we get the chain rule, which is just saying that the composite is smooth as a map between manifolds. And so we can breathe again. The two notions combine together and we get back the notion of smooth map between manifolds. And now I'm going to do the second part of the talk where uh, we examine important maps arising in persistence theory and analyze their differentiability. So recall this setting where you have the simplicial complex K and the, the persistent homology map, of course. And in front of that, you have a smooth selection from a manifold of parameters uh, via parameterization, a map F that selects for you a, a filter function. And you want to analyze whether the, the composite is smooth. And again, the, the important visual example is the one of height filters to which direction we associate a height function. So here's the, the result. It's saying that the composite, the barcode valued map is generically smooth. Generically meaning uh, on an open dense subset of the input space. And so here the, the idea of the proof is very elementary. If I give you a filter function, it, so a real valued map over the simplices of K, it induces a pre-order on the simplices, basically by looking at increasing values. 
It's not a partial order, it's really a pre order. We lack empty symmetry. And if locally the pre order induced by filter functions do not change, so of course the values of the filter functions will change if I change the, the input parameter, but if the pre order induced on the, the, the simplicity do not change, then in this neighborhood, the persistence map behaves like a linear map, and in fact, a permutation map. And so it is as smooth as you can expect. That's pretty much the idea. What about the set of non-differentiability, the so-called singular set? Uh, we know it's a measure zero subset, but what, how does it lo look like? And what can we say? So let's take the example of the height functions again. And so here I have drawn a yellow point, which is a singular point. And the reason why it's singular, if I zoom on the right, is that it induces this height function, like diagonal height function. And the problem here is that it is orthogonal to a pair of vertices. Well, the problem with that is if you patch up a little bit your height function on the right or on the left, one vertex will appear before the other or the opposite. And this might result in a kind of absolute value effect at the levels of intervals. So a non-smoothness uh, behavior, a non-smooth behavior. And so if you now draw all these directions that are kind of pathological, you get this red arc of circles on your sphere. This is a singular set. But as you can see, it's not too pathological. It's not a counter set. It's just cutting our sphere infinitely many pieces. And in fact, th th this partitioning is called a witness classification. But just think partition, finite partition. We, we kind of are cutting the space into finitely many manifolds of varying dimension. And with respect to this partition, the map, the parameterization, which associates a, a direction to the function, the height function, is a stratified map. It sends a stratum of the sphere, namely a great red circle, to a stratum of the space of filter function. I mean, what I mean by a stratum of the space of filter function is just filter functions inducing the same pre order on simplices. So it sends strata to strata. This, this uh, map sends strata to strata. And in general, here's what we can say for a general manifold and general parameterization. If you're able to find a stratification of the input space, making your, parameter, your parameterization into a stratified map, then uh, the barcode valued map will have directional derivatives everywhere. So it's not differentiable everywhere, but directionally differentiable everywhere with finitely many directional derivatives. I'm not, I'm not really giving the details of what it is, what is a directional derivative, but it is what you think it is. Like if you look at this, if I zoom to this singular point, you see that you have three kind of incident strata to this point, the two top dimensional ones and the lower dimensional red circle kind of containing this point that gives you three directions to test. So three different gradients, the kind of limiting derivatives. And this is the only thing that you can get. So this theorem is kind of saying up to computing a little a bit more uh, derivatives, you know the linear behavior or the linear approximation of your backward valued map everywhere. And maybe I should say that these assumptions are reasonable because it applies to all kind of semi-algebraic, semi-analytic uh, settings or transversal maps in the sense of stratified space. And so it's quite, uh, quite reasonable. Now let's look at the, the, the other case where we, we leave barcodes now and we go to a manifold. So maybe a vectorization or persistence-based loss. And so here's what we can say. All these three maps, so the three bullet points are differentiable everywhere or generically differentiable. So you have the bottleneck distance to a fixed diagram. You have persistent images and any smooth function of barcode intervals. So here, uh, I combine those in, in, in one kind of block, but those are three very different results because the first one is quite technical, but the two others are very straightforward. Namely, for general vectorizations, it's quite easy to prove the differentiability. And it would be quite interesting to extend that to other vectorizations such as basic curves or maybe landscapes. Sometimes you have to adapt a little bit the construction because they exhibit per construction some, non, uh, some singularities. So you would have to smooth the construction a little bit, but it's, uh, it's quite manageable. And anyway, if we now combine the differentiability of the map into barcodes with the differentiability of the map out of barcodes and the chain rule, well, we have that all these maps that we had in the introduction, except the last one, which is of quite different nature, but all these kind of setups, we have that all these objective functions are differentiable, or at least generically. 
and therefore amenable to gradient descent as desired. And so I think th these results have been designed so as to enable the future user to implement his choice of manifold parameter, parameterization, and, and et cetera, and ensure the differentiability quite quickly. So yes, so I had another, another few slides about a, a setup where we consider a, a smooth finite dimensional manifold instead of a simplicial complex, and we track the critical points in a smooth way rather than simplices, but um, I think it's best to stop here and take the time to take some questions if you have some. And um, yes, thanks a lot for listening. Thank you. Um, so questions. Um, so please don't forget to unmute yourself um, before asking so that everyone can hear you. Can I ask a question? Sure. All right. So, so I, I haven't seen any place where you actually use the, you know, the fact that you are looking at barcodes. To me, it seems that you are only using that this is a multi-set of this, I can't remember the word, uh, you know, this diff, what was the word for describing this structure? The diffeological spaces, maybe? Diffeological spaces. That yeah. If you take a diffeological space and you take multi-sets, finite multi-sets, of a diffeological space, then this space of multi-sets is also diffeological. Sure, sure. Right? So, so barcodes don't play a role here, right? What plays a role is, is you do this, you yeah. know, yeah, I mean. You're right, it's really the structure of a multi-set that plays a role because we are just, it's basically because we are presenting barcodes this way as, a, as ordered spaces, modulo uh, the permutation that, that we get this diffeology. It's, it has nothing to do, for instance, with topology. We do, we're not using really the bottleneck topology here. Mm -hmm. so, so yes, the mature right. Uh, but the quotienting also comes in as well. As you, as you explained, I suppose. Yes, it's important that uh, when you take a quotient, you, you but yeah, the quotient- On, on the diagonal. Yeah, yeah, it's quite important, yeah. So we have another question in the chat window. Uh, why diffeology instead of differentiable stack? Is it more convenient in your setting? Is there a relation with configuration space of, of a point? Okay, so I see kind of two interesting questions there. Um, I don't know about differentiable stacks, but I believe the, the advantage of diffeology is that we get a convenient notion of differential. It's, uh, I didn't say it, but it's very easy to compute in practice using the standard algorithm, for instance. You get the differential. So that's important for optimization purpose. I don't know what you would get with, uh, with maybe a differentiable stack, like definitions coming from there. Um, that's a good point. As for configuration spaces, um, I don't know what you were asking precisely, but with this framework, you can show that um, taking the manifold M here to be a, conf a configuration space, and taking the map B to, to be the ribs filtration, uh, you get the differentiability of uh, the map. So basically, with respect to a smooth perturbation of point positions, you get a smooth uh, perturbation of the, of, the, of the intervals in the barcode. So, yeah. Okay, uh, more questions. So as I said, feel free to unmute yourself or just type your question into the chat window. I want to ask a question. So you mentioned how um, many of these vectorization techniques, um, you know, are smooth and that you could probably check and you expect it to work, for example, landscapes and things like this. Um, I was wondering if, if there's a hope to try to prove that for many such vectorizations at once. I think Vincent and others have, have looked at, um, you know, trying to formalize many different vectorizations from a statistical perspective. I was wondering if you think that's reasonable to try to do here, or does it get do the nuances of each one become a little too uh, complicated? So you would like some kind of result that's a proof of differentiability, like for kind of general... Uh, or, yeah, like if, if a vectorization technique satisfies this, these properties, then that's enough to give de okay, differentiability. So that's a, that's a, exactly, because last time uh, we had this uh, family of linear vectorizations. Right. Uh, it's a great family because uh, they're all expressed in a kind of homogeneous manner. And I realized that, yes, you can show that uh, all these linear uh, nice. realizations are smooth as long as uh, something is uh, satisfied. That's great, because that's quite a lot already. You know? yes, uh, yes, because uh, I didn't know that before. And so I had to, we, we, we had to examine different vectorizations uh, separately. 
Et je trouve ça une autre qualité systématique. But, uh, but the first part, you see, the, the part manifold to, to barcode is quite general. You can implement your choice of manifold and parameterization as you wish. It's like, um, it's, uh, yeah. Very nice. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so we do have time for at least one more question. So maybe I have one more question. Sorry, maybe I should give someone else. Maybe someone else wants to. No, go ahead. So, so, so you see, I mean, okay, you show that the standard constructions are smooth and, and it's not surprising for me. I mean, we've been using this, you know, for analysis, it just, you know, got to be smooth. But do you have a, an interesting construction which is stable, you know, almost stable, but it's not smooth. You know, something that somehow, you know, okay, the, the standard things, we take, a, you know, rip yeah, 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 barcodes, yeah. etc. that that's smooth, that's not surprising. But, okay. but does, do you have something that we might, that people have used, for example, and yeah. actually it's not smooth? So not smooth at all would be very bad news. But exactly. That's why, that's why I'm, uh, you know, if everything is smooth or too much things are smooth, then maybe it's too, I'm just curious, like, you know, I want to see something which is not smooth. Sure. Or so maybe some people that what people used, hmm. you know, some, I know Betty diagrams, just numbers, you know, like you count number of bars, what, you know, sure. number of, number of bars, something, you know, something that it's, uh, and some, which some people use in analysis. Uh, so, or for example, counting, I don't know, counting number of simplices, I don't know, some, something which is... So yeah, so the problem with counting is that you, you end up in a discrete space, so that you sure. don't want to do, but, but uh, here, this example of the height function, for instance, you, we've seen that it exhibits uh, singularities, and in fact, although it's a kind of measure zero set, uh, this behavior happened in all the optimization pipelines that we see, we're always kind of jumping uh, around uh, a set of non-differentiability. And it would be nice, and in fact, we, we we're thinking about it, like how to incorporate this, uh, these similarities and these directional derivatives into the, into the, the actual uh, descent. Where, yeah, and yes, also in the, I didn't talk about it, but in the continuous case where you have functions on a manifold, you can show that the barcode will react smoothly to perturbation of a function whenever the, the, the function is Morse function with Okay. Uh, critical values of multiplicity one. But when you get a, maybe a, a cubic singularity or something else, then you, you might get interesting behavior uh, uh, and an interesting uh, singularity to analyze. Yeah. But, but, but is there, I mean, do you see some correlation between the singularities and the way the, the gradient descent works? I mean, can you like make, you know, finding better minima or maxima going through, I don't know, singular, uh, more efficient? Yeah. Yeah, so that's, uh, yeah, that's exactly what we were interested in right now. Because, you know, I mean, it could be, you know, it just, like, it could be that it's not smooth because it's just bent, right? And not, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. yeah, it doesn't sort of. So, yes, um, so in, um, in, in, in a generalized gradient literature, that there is a way to kind of analyze this just local Lipschitz map and compute their subgradients or various gradients and try to find the best direction and so on. Um, and so there are various techniques there that could try to be adapted to here where we have barcodes instead of just a Euclidean set, but we could try to adapt that. Um, and so, uh, so yes, here we have, we have a, a beautiful structure because there are finitely many uh, derivatives. So the, the kind of subgradient is easy to compute unlike the, the general case of local Lipschitz map. Uh, Thank you, I'm satisfied. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so um, now I want to invite you to join me in thanking the speaker. And uh, so I would ask you to unmute yourself and clap. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Jacob, thank you again.